everybody, Cody over here, and I'm here with the one, the only Patrick Dees. Hello, hello. And we have decided to choose the lovely Pinkberry as our place of recording today. I mean, is there a better place to record? I don't think no. so. Why wouldn't we choose no. Pinkberry? In case you guys didn't know, Pinkberry is my favorite frozen yogurt. I learned that about you today. Like, yes, yeah, you I feel like they're learning that as well. This is a sh good charity experience. And the reason for that is because it's got this great texture and it's got a very unique tart that no other place like Yogurt Land or Menchie's can compare. So but my favorite thing about today is though <laughs> is that she ordered the honeycomb. I don't know if you can see this zoom in a little bit right there. But like it's a legit block of honeycomb right on top of it. It's I didn't brand know that new. was a thing. I didn't I never tried it here but it's pretty good. Have you tried this? I have not. I'll get in there while you while you tee this up. Okay and you can tell me if you like I'm it or not. Because I kinda this. dragged him over here. Yeah like legitimately dragged. The cool right? thing about, about Patrick is he's always down for everything. Yeah. It's an easy sell way to talk about fun stuff and then eat ice cream. Like, like, who says no to that? Hey, can we talk about your favorite subjects and eat, eat delicious I know, stuff? Right? Yeah, totally on board. That sounds pretty magical. That sounds all right. Um, so, what are we talking about today? You said nerdy things. Nerdy things. Well, I basically like said what we've been up to. I don't know. Movies, TV, okay. and games. We're I like gonna, all of those. We're gonna go down that arena Fair because enough. that's basically what we talk about, even off record. That's true. Um, but let's talk about some movie stuff. And okay. What, what movies have you been interested in watching this summer that you haven't watched yet? Oh, this summer that I haven't watched yet? Yes. Or maybe even this whole year. I would say, I would say this whole year. So like the, the thing for me, far and away, the thing I'm most excited about is Rogue One. Yeah. Like I'm a Star Wars guy and the trailer dropped tonight, which we haven't seen. Yet. I might be dating I, it. I, I didn't have, have a chance to see it. it. I'm totally excited about Rogue One even before this trailer. And it's... Um, yeah, I think it's that, and for me, everything else. Every almost almost every film I've seen this year has been a colossal disappointment. Oh, so I'm wow. hoping this doesn't. Because uh, by this time last year, we had like Mad Max had come out. Yeah. Like we had a, like a baby, like really, really. It follows had come out. Like all of these really, really good films. Oh yeah, you love it. Follows. I did love it. Follows. If you haven't seen that, even marginally so, in the horror, you might want to check it out. So what was the worst movie you've seen this year? Batman Superman. I don't think mm -hmm. it's even close. Mm -hmm. Cinematic abortion. It was oh. unbelievably bad. I and I went in, so, oh, I would say don't, look, did you like uh, Man of Steel? No. Okay, then you're really going to hate this. <laughs> I was the biggest apologist for Man of Steel, like, maybe ever. Mm -hmm. I really, so I'm a big Snyder guy. Okay. And I really liked Man of Steel, the original, because what it did was, it didn't do that thing where, like, we see all of Clark's backstory. Yeah. They did that thing where uh, it flashes back, right, mm -hmm. toward really pivotal moments. And I thought it was really cool. Visually, it was striking. I liked Zod. And it wasn't a perfect film, but I really, I thought it showed a lot of promise. And I thought this Batman Superman was going to build off of that. Critics disagreed with me. Critics didn't like it. So when all the reviews started coming in for Batman and Superman, I was like, okay, sure, but I'll like it because nobody else did. Right. And it was unbelievably bad. It was unwatchable. Oh. And I was the biggest apologist. Like, prime yeah, you for are. that. You're like I super am. positive. Yeah. Well, and especially for like Snyder films and... and and Batman, and especially because I liked that Superman so much. I thought this was probably just more of that, mm -hmm. and it was just like all of it was bad. I thought the one Ray, and I'd be interested to get your take when you watch it. I thought Affleck was a great Bruce Wayne. I don't know if I'm gonna watch it. I mean, considering how much you talked. I know, I know. I'm not doing it any favors. <laughs> I was just, uh, if you do see it, I'm interested to see what you think. Are you gonna watch Justice League though? I might, but I mean, there's a lot of movies that I still I haven't even seen Suicide Squad yet. And I've I haven't either. I think we talked each other out of it. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're like, no, nah, I don't know. No. Yeah. The soundtrack is unbelievable. Do you have you so you have I the love the soundtrack. So what's on the soundtrack? Um there's a Skrillex, Skrillex Rick Ross track. Oh, okay. There's okay. a there's one called um Heathens okay. by twenty one I'll look it up. It's called the Heathens. It's track three on the soundtrack. Unbelievable. Um, yeah, some it's getting some M's, some a bunch of other stuff. I think track for track, it's great. Weirdly, at the end of the the, the soundtrack, Queens Clearwater, uh, yeah. Fortunate Sons. At the end, it's just it's unbelievable. Well, I'm hearing I'm hearing that Suicide Squad has very mixed reviews. Yeah, uh, a lot more mixed than Batman vs Superman, right? I think so. Yeah, and but I'm hearing you, you don't really see much of Jared Leto, surprisingly. Which was the draw, and it's weird that they put him as like the marketing. He was front and center for mm -hmm. this film, right? Like I feel like they sold. Well, not as big as Harley Quinn. True. 50-50 though, right? Like everybody was very interested to see Post Ledger. They yeah. wanted to see Leto was an amazing actor. Yeah, no, he's, well, not, he, it's his first movie since his uh, Academy Award. Dallas Buyers Club, yeah. right? Which he destroyed, right. and like, I think the Joker seemed just weird enough I'm for him to like this. crush. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> anyway. It's so good. So skip Batman Superman, try Pinkberry, like, honeycomb. It's alright. Or take this to watch. 
Suicide Squad. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so what's been the worst movie that you've seen so far this year? I've seen a lot of mediocre movies. Okay, okay. Like? Like, I've seen a lot of like, oh my god, this is going to be a good movie, or there's, I'm super hyped about the movie, okay. and then I just never... Well, like the, the Secret Life of Pets. I didn't see it. I'm a huge pet lover, and there's a Pomeranian in there, and I thought I'm going to love this movie because there's a Pomeranian. Right up your alley. <laughs> but it, it fell a little flat. Okay. And also, I love movies that involve sharks, anything sharks. So that movie with Blake Lively, what was it called? Uh, I don't know. Finding Dory? <laughs> I didn't see Top Gun. Yeah, I didn't either. I didn't see that. And I heard mixed things about that too. But anyway, um, yeah, it's like it's like a summer of not blockbuster movies. But anyway, so I saw the Blake Lively movie where she's getting attacked by a shark. Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. The Shallows. Yes, The oh Shallows. Oh my god, yes. Did you see it? That trailer freaked me the fuck out. No. Can we swear on this? I'm swearing on this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, the trailer. Course. I'm super into it, but uh, I swooned into the trailer, but the movie didn't deliver. Mm -hmm. It didn't deliver. Okay. I mean, it wasn't awful, but I wouldn't recommend it to a friend. That's kind of how I gauge it. If I would recommend it to a friend saying, you must see this, it's pretty damn good. Mm -hmm. If I would say, I'm not only going to recommend it to you, but I'm going to sit my ass next to you watching this again, that's my Oh, yeah, yeah, it doesn't get better. That is as high a recommendation as it Yeah, gets. and I, I felt like that for Kingsman. Um, oh, yeah, totally. I made, I made other people see Kingsman, yeah. too. And uh, the third of Captain, uh, Captain America, I thought was really good. Did people disagree with you? Well, how good Captain... I think you might did. Be, no, I thought it might, be, it might be the best movie I've seen this year. Yeah, it's a really good one. Yeah, totally. Um, I think they, they laid out all the characters really well. Mm -hmm. And the good, the magical thing about Marvel is they they bring the characters together and then they have great standalones as well. I agree. And they tie it in so well. Because we oftentimes, we're talking about Captain America um, 3, we oftentimes think, well, at least I do, so these guys destroy all these buildings, yep. fuck up all these cities, and they have no, um, like, oh, I like responsibility yeah. or accountability for it? He, there's no res, res, whatever, whatever, but yes. Yeah. But then they talk about that in Captain America 3, no, where totally. they're like, dude, this is not okay. Yeah. We have to put a stop to the superhero. Yep. And I thought that was magical. I thought it was yeah. magical. I like that's a good word for that. My favorite thing about what Marvel's doing really well, and I'm not like a Marvel fanboy at all. You're more of a DC or you don't? I mean, I mean, look, I think Batman's, Batman's probably my favorite character and I think that they're bastardizing who is it. It's rough. Um, but what I, what I find, what Marvel's crushing it is what they, to your point, they've got all these characters, right? But they have these little moments that say like, that I think Force Awakens did too. They're characters who I want to spend time with. Like in that, in that Captain America movie where like, um, uh, I don't remember the uh, Winter Soldiers in the back seat. He's like, "Could you move the seat up?" And he's like, "No." Like, just like it was one of those like, re just genuine moments that yeah. I kind of. Or when, um, or, or when Paul Rudd as Ant Man like totally fanboys out when he oh, sees Steve that. Rogers, right? I love like, that part. It's those moments that I think like they all feel very real and so fleshed out. Whereas, um, when a Batman Superman was like unmitigated like anger and like irresponsibility. Look, here's the thing. I'll just tell you this, and I have it. Um, the beginning of Batman Superman is like, I knew I was not going to be a fan. So like, everybody knows the story when uh, Bruce's parents get killed, right? Like, sure. out from the theater. In this movie, uh, Bruce, the, the gun is pulled on Bruce Wayne's parents. Okay. And they're just there, he's robbing them. And Bruce Wayne's dad throws a punch at the man with the gun, Joe Cool or whatever that guy's name Okay. Is. Straight up punches him, mm -hmm. which causes him to shoot his mother, Martha, mm -hmm. and then him. So, like, it was it was unnecessary violence, and that whole movie became that. Like, it was all Bruce's response to uh, to Superman, and that stupid line in the trailer, like, if there's even a 1% chance that he can end us. Like, <laughs> I don't know, man, I have a fucking dialogue with the guy. Like, all of this would have been avoided if you just, like, picked up the phone and went, hey, yo, Superman. Like, it's so dumb. And it was just like, I don't know, so... I mean, I gotta make my own assessment and eventually watch it, but you're definitely not I know, enticing I'm definitely, me to watch I, it at I think all. You should save your money. It's bad. It's a bad film. Suicide Squad, too. I, I have lost my interest in watching it. Mm -hmm. What are some movies that you're interested in watching that's coming out this year? I think really, like I said, really, uh, it was two before this weekend, so uh, it was... Two before this weekend. Well, I finally saw um, Zero Days, which is a... It's a weird documentary, and I know it's obscure, but it's, it's quite really scary. fascinating. So, if you if you remember familiar with that Scientology uh, documentary came out? No, I'm spacing the name. It is that won, Scientology? You're like, nope. It won an Academy Award for the 
for Documentary of the Year last year. And it was all about Scientology and how crazy it is. Um, his next film is called Zero Days. And it was about a, uh, a computer virus okay. that the United States joint built jointly with Israel and then launched at Iran. This really happened. Okay. And it's Oh, you told me about it. It's fascinating. This. Yeah, because it blew my but mind. But it was on Netflix. It's it, definitely it on, it's on Netflix and see it. I don't know, like, Even I think better. it's terrifying. I think it's one of those things that, like, there's, like, legit drama built into it, but it's a thing that, like, occurred, and it's this fourth dimension of warfare. Like, mm -hmm. he makes the point of the film that, like, for years, warfare was on foot, and then it was sea and land, right? Mm -hmm. And then World War I introduced, like, aerial combat, and this is, like, the fourth dimension of that, like, knocking out infrastructure before we attack stuff. I'm looking forward to it. It totally would deliver. It's one of my favorite movies of the year. Okay, wow. But, like, that and then, um... I'm a, sorry, I'm just knocking the shit out of this. Um, okay, real quick. Not really. Patrick uh, Shane Black. <laughs> Do you know Shane Black? Um, amazing writer. I directed like a film movies. called uh, The Nice Guys. Okay. Is that, isn't that one with Ryan Gosling? Yes. I need to see that. That's Absolutely cool. see it. Isn't that, that's on Netflix too, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. I saw the theater. I love how I, I was I, one I, of the only people that saw it in the theater. Like, I'm ones good. of people across the country saw this. Nobody saw this movie. It's so good. So look, you guys, I... Quit my, I said goodbye to cable, so I'm just completely reliant on Netflix currently. That's, oh, that's why I'm right. like, is that on Netflix? Oh, that's right. <laughs> is that on Netflix? How is that going? Um, good. I feel like there's no changes worth uh, 100 bucks of uh, a month. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm happy with my decision on cutting cable. Good for you. Yeah, I don't think I need it. It's did not you necessary do, at all. Did you do like Hulu and those other subscription services? I did not. Or do you... But I am thinking about doing Amazon Prime because I do order a lot from Amazon. Okay. And I think that it would just pay itself off More really than... quick. Mm -hmm. But I I do know that once Game of Thrones comes back, I will want to get HBO. 15 So bucks. that's going to be hard. All right. It's worth it. I don't know. Or I'm just going to have to like find a friend and be like, uh, you want me to pay your bill for like or two split months? split it with them or something? Yeah, totally. Yeah, right? Okay. My password. I mean, I think there's ways. Yeah, I, I got you. What do you think of cable? Do you, don't you think it's kind of high? I'm having a hard time because I weirdly, yeah. If I had any level of responsibility, I would have cut mine as well. But I'm <laughs> spending far too much money, and it's weird. Like I watch certain shows on cable, even though I don't need to. Like I'm a big Mr. Robot guy, uh, uh, and oh, I, I've been recording that. It's so good. What season is that in? Two. Mm. And one, I think you could binge pretty quickly. I bet it's on Netflix. It's totally. Yeah. Super smart. <laughs> Um, but I watch that on traditional like DVR. I'm sure there's a million other ways I could do it. But 90% of the stuff I watch is all through my Apple TV, and it's all through it like you know HBO Go or nice. Apple yeah, TV has everything. Yeah, yeah. So like most of the stuff I'm watching is, but some of it's a function of your cable subscription because you have to you have to have that app registered. But so I don't know. Like one of these days I'll actually sit down and decide I need to cut it because I don't watch I watch live sports. Like so during yeah. NBA Finals and whatnot, it was really useful. For the most part, I don't. I don't watch anything live, and I'm not like I'm not really using it. So I know I need to. I need to mix it up. Okay, so could you explain to moi how Apple TV works? Mm. So yeah, so it's very similar to like your phone. You got like a series of apps mm -hmm. on your television, mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> you can buy stuff from like iTunes, and it just shows up there, and you just watch it on your television, all huge, and it's awesome. So how you, much is like an average show or an average? So like TV show? So does that add up? Two bucks. Two bucks per episode or per like episode. show? Mm. So and then you can buy a season typically for like, let's say you watch three things. We're going to be way cheaper than cable. If you watch like three shows, like if you want to watch Mr. Robot and a couple other like Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones isn't on there, but like other shows are. You buy a season pass, it's like 24 bucks. And oh. when they're on there, you just watch it. Um, and then they're, 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 it's all app based, right? Season so, pass, yeah. Okay. Um, and so that's all through iTunes, but then there's all app based. So like if I wanted to watch like, um, USA has their own yeah. app, and ABC has their own oh, app. Oh, I so, see. Um, and I will say, I'm obsessed. It's only Netflix. Obviously, I watch Netflix with it. I'm obsessed with the remote because you've got a Siri in the remote. So you can say oh. all kinds of stuff like... So you're just talking to the remote. I want to watch a Ryan Gosling film. And then it'll just pull up like all of the Ryan Gosling films. So you can say, like, I want to watch a bad Ryan Gosling film. And it'll bring up all of the films with like less than a 50% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's genius. Really? Yeah. And That's I... crazy. And like my phone rings all the time. So like I, I'll be like... Very uh, popular. No, no. Work, work stuff. I'm like, oh, what's the opposite of popular? No. Like, <laughs> I'm a nerd who works too much. Uh, but you could say, like, um, uh, Siri, rewind 30 seconds. And it'll just 
Back it up. It's so good. That's crazy. I know. Have you asked for Siri, Siri, can you cook for me or something crazy? Can you cook for me? Oh, on my phone I do all the time. I ask my stupid shit on my phone all the time. That's it's hilarious. kind of ridiculous. If you haven't done this, uh, don't do this now because it's way too long. But if you're watching this, go ask Siri if she knows how to beatbox. You will not be disappointed. She beatboxes? She beatboxes. Oh Check it out. Go ask her. That's crazy. Seriously, we'll wait. You want to pause? Okay, so now okay. they've seen it. Yeah, yeah now, now, now they know the beatbox <laughs> Uh, what, what, so let's, let's talk a little about, t about TV because I know I've been watching Stranger Things. Not Stranger Things, yeah, let's talk about Stranger Things. Okay. What do you think? Because I know you liked it. I did. But I want everyone to know how much you liked it. <laughs> the show was unbelievable. It came in, like, so much, I think, when we watch, you know, we talk about video games and TV shows and movies. So much of what I think my experience is a function of, a function of expectation, right? Like, and, and, Changing Things is one of those things that I was very concerned about watching. So I didn't watch it the week it came out. I watched it a couple weeks later. Because you're busy. Popular. And people lost their minds <laughs> about this show, right? Like, and I was very worried that there's no way it was ever going to live up to the hype. And it did for you. And it blew my mind. Yeah, absolutely. It was fantastic. I swear I'm like the biggest anti component. Because you know how I felt about the ending. You did. I was just... They don't. Well, I, I wasn't as happy with the ending because... I felt that they rushed the ending too quick, yep. and the, the they didn't tie it in well. Like it wasn't as fluid as I'd like it to be. Sure. It was kind of rushed. Like why why not a writer and the officer suddenly in there and are we gonna so spoil it? Fine. Oh, I guess we are. Spoiler yeah. alert. I'm just, <laughs> Foghorn. <laughs> or, yeah. Yeah. Spoil it. Oh no! No no no! They, this was I wasn't gonna spoil. I thought you were oh. gonna go there. I, no, well, I was I, gonna do I the like, end end, but the end end was like eh, I would be okay if like season two, which has been renewed, yep. and has a completely new cast. I don't care about what came out of the guy's mouth at the end. Yeah, no, it would be cool, right? Like if it was its own, like it was its own anthology, right? Yeah. Like if it was a whole new other Stranger Things happened. I would have been really on board with that. But they did do the characters were great. The characters were great. And I'm so, not. Complaining about the characters. I'm complaining about the ending. It felt so M. Night Shyamalan. Oh, interesting. For me. Like, you know, like, there's this thrill, there's mystery, there's intrigue, and all of a sudden it was like, okay, let's get cheesy for the end. That's okay. how it felt. Yep. You know? It was. Like it was signs, that, that kind of feeling. So you, if you watch this, what, it, what, what blew my mind about the show was like, it's very like evocative of what you stuff, and it's very heavily, they're open about this, like, influenced by like, uh, by uh, Steven Spielberg, yeah. um, by Stephen King, yeah. um, by uh, John Carpenter. Yeah. So I understand. So like, okay, great. It feels <laughs> like all of those things when you watch it. Mm -hmm. It occurred to me later, about like episode four or five, was literally it's three different shows. So the kids are living in a Steven Spielberg movie, the teens are living in a John Carpenter movie, mm -hmm. and the adults are living in a Stephen King film. But somehow it's a cohesive narrative and it all works. Did you read that or did that come to your it mind? It came to me like, a, like episode four or five. I'm like, they're genius. so distinct. <laughs> it wasn't me. Like, they created this. But you think about it, it's totally true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I haven't had anybody call me out on it and say, like, no. And it's like the fact that they can do three different three different like influences and have it all be one really cohesive narrative that's fun blew my mind. And so like it became even more fun as I was watching. I was like, it's so seamless to transition to the, the teenagers and then to the adults and then back to the kids. It was, I mean, like amazing filmmaking. It makes me want to watch it. It's yeah. so smart. Try, try give it a second jump. Oh, it is very smart. Yeah. And there's like, I like the curveballs. I like how the guy was like, I think we talked about this, but the high school, um, like preppy the, guy, the jock. The jock. Oh, yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah, the cool guy. What wasn't the cool guy all the way right. through? You know, he genuinely liked the girl. Yeah. And this is like little love triangle there. Yeah. I, I like that. I liked everything about it. Except I felt the ending was just not my. Fair enough. I did it. But you did love the characters, and I think maybe that's why this. Maybe there's some hope for season two, right? Like I want to spend more time with them. Yeah, I did like the characters. I think the actors were all well chosen, amazing. The ch children actor, child actors were the best. I, I tweeted about this, but Dustin is my spirit animal. <laughs> like he's the best, the best. He's my favorite part of the whole show. He he kind of reminds me of um, that kid in the Goonies. Yeah, totally. Is, is his name Chunk? Chunk? Yeah. Chunk. Hey, yeah, you yes, guys. Chunk. Yeah, totally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's the best. Your spirit animal. Mm -hmm. um, I want to be Dustin. Other movies, other things, 
TV shows I'm watching. I'm watching Penny Dreadful. I just watched all of it. And it's on my list, thanks I to you. I need you to watch I'm excited show. about it. I need Did you finish three? Talk about it. Yes. Did you finish season three and it was, it was a great ending? It was a good ending. It was so, a good ending. And look at how I feel about endings. I'm very picky. So it's, it's good to know going into a show that it ends well. I, like so many shows, you start and you invest and then it ends very badly. And like I think the benefit of like having these, watching a show when that whole arc is done is like, you can have somebody like you tell you, hey, it's a satisfactory ending, as opposed to like, who wants to invest three seasons in a show and have it be terrible? I think it was the, the best ending they could have done. Jesus. It's such a good show. It's I'm really sad that's over, but I'm actually like, happy that they stopped it at its prime, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. It's not like Breaking Bad, where we're all bummed that it's over, but they, they did it perfectly. Yeah, okay, fair enough. That's that feeling. So yeah, Penny Dreadful, I highly recommend it. Um, obviously, you've seen Voltron, right? uh, No, but I literally, all of, everybody's opinion matters to me that is also like this huge nerd <laughs> has been telling me Voltron Voltron. It is. Okay. You'll, you'll go through it quickly. I watched it twice. How, how long is it? Um, well, there's like 11 episodes. The first episode is three, three episodes in one, so it's like an hour. Wow. But every other, every episode is about 22 minutes. You know? Okay. But the animation is really well. Netflix. All right. Everything I'm talking about TV all shows right. is Netflix. Fair enough. They're killing it. Yeah. Or I, I watch Friends of Files all the time. Anything murder. <laughs> just, just do the murder stuff. <laughs> I, murder. Did back. you watch Making a Murderer? I. <laughs> so bad. I know. Yeah, I, I, I regret having watched it. I think it looks, it's good television, but like it just bummed me the hell out. Of there, well, there is something else on my list. On um, my the list that I put on your list was uh, the podcast. Cereal. Did you start that? I have not. Oh, I have yeah. But admittedly, nothing got in front of that. So that's next up. I'm trying to entertain you, Patrick. So yeah, I know you feel like you're a great source of it. <laughs> I think it's shitty when you like recommend something to somebody. They say they're gonna watch it, and then they watch four things before that. So, but if it if it ends up being months out and it is the next up, then I'm, I'm always okay with it. There's totally no rush, but okay. I just think that. Basically, I make you watch things so we can talk about I'm it. I'm in. I do the same thing. Yeah, totally. I love that, though. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, so, can you watch it so we can have it? You need, you need that, though. And I'm like, lonely here. No, but I, I, yeah, like, I think that's one of my favorite things about games or movies or TV is, like, it's a shared experience. And then yes. when I, at times, watch them in a vacuum and you need somebody to, like, bounce it off of, like, mm -hmm. well, well, yeah, totally. Well, so, also, like, we'll, we'll talk about games a little bit because yes. this weekend you sent me a screenshot of Atsu. I did. Couple and shots, right? You know me well. I love marine life, and I love. I thought it might be up your alley a little bit. Like you know the visuals and stuff, yep. and I love the game Journey. And sure you did. I think you would like Atsu. Yep. It's only two hours long, and I'm like mm -hmm. perfect. Not that. a big commitment. Yes, and uh, it was actually shorter for me. It was 90 minutes long. That's crazy. <laughs> I don't know how I ran through it, but I did. <laughs> um, I'm glad you recommended it to me. However, but. however. Okay, out of five stars, I would give it maybe 2.5. Okay, so walk me through that. Why, though? And I'm good with that because I don't... Here's the thing. People say this game, for people who aren't familiar with it, it's um, that yeah. game. It's a lot of that game company alone. The guys that did Journey. It's the, guy, the same guys that did the music. The art director is the but, same person. But it's a new company, though. It is a new company yes. called Giant Squid. So it's the same people, a lot of that DNA. But I think it gets pitched to people as Underwater Journey, and that's not fair. And so I'm... I'm very huh. critical of it and can understand why you give it 2.5, but I want to hear why. Well, I mean, it's a good 2.5. It's almost okay. a 3. Okay. Oh, wow. All right. <laughs> Real generous there. All right. Really, really. Really going wait. out on the limb, this one. Wait, wait, wait. Why, why, though? Why, why, why 2.5? Because I felt like it was, it started getting redundant, even though every kind of a spoiler, every level you get to witness different marine life. You know? Definitely not a spoiler. Yeah. Nope, it's an underwater game. You, you see some fucking fish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like every level you see, or every you know area, you yeah. don't get a different yeah. type of fish. Yeah, sure. You go deeper underwater, but after a while, it just feels like there's no challenge to the game. There's yeah. zero challenge. There's almost like, it's almost void <laughs> of mechanics. Yeah. I think that was my criticism too. It felt like it wasn't beat for beat journey, but it was pretty close. Yeah. And I also felt like, to your point, it was two hours for me, and by the end of it, I thought it was almost a little long, and that's a problem. Right. So right, right. I'm very glad I played it. I think it was beautiful. The, the music was stunning, and um, but I feel like we've been there. Like we hit a lot of those beats. So I don't know anything will have the emotional resonance that Journey did. Well, yeah, not to be a dick, but like I felt like Journey visually was much more breathtaking. 
used to. Did you? Okay. I did. Even though I, I'm fascinated by like green light yeah. and everything, and I, I love that the sharks and the whales, those are my favorite. You favorites. grabbed onto them and you yes. slam with them? Yeah, they were awesome. awesome, but yep. I just, it fell flat. Like everything was very easy in the sense that, okay, we've got to open this door, just follow this chain. Get this That's a dead, there's no process. There's nothing. So that was like, what? Yeah, I can see that. I think I was, um, I don't know what it was, I was hoping for something that was as emotionally resonant as Journey. And it, just, it wasn't that, and I think we'd seen it all. Like, it was okay, even like, there's some scenes, and again, it's not a spoiler at all, but you, you're underwater, so you swim near whales. And a scene that really could have been majestic, I felt like, okay, great, you're showing me the scale, I get it, you're tiny, and you're underwater. Yeah, yeah, that, and I'm yeah. Like, I knew, I was anxious for it to be done, whereas, <laughs> whereas when Journey ended, I was a wreck. I had to, I like turned the lights off and I had to think about Journey for a little bit. Oh my bit. god, Journey was its own animal. If you haven't played that, like literally, it's, I think it's the front runner for the argument that games can be art. Yeah. Um, and I think it's transcendent. I think everybody should play that. It's just one of those, yeah, I mean, I, ineffable but, experiences. And the music as well was it's unbeatable. Everything flowed perfectly together in Journey. Not to talk about Journey. But no, yeah. but did you think the music in Abzu was on par? With Journey? It was on par, but it was good. Yeah, it the did, music it was did great. Cool my heart totally. Story. I thought the music yeah. was great. Yeah. It was my favorite part. I think it was great. And also, uh, Absu, like, you eventually find out, this is spoiler alert, she's a robot. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. So that kind of, I know, it, for me, it probably made sense. Like, oh, it makes sense. She's a robot because she's going so deep and she's not like, doesn't need a tank or whatever. Sure, sure, sure. But at the same time, you're playing a video game, so you're kind of like, Damn, dude! Like I wish you were real. Take me oh, away that's from, interesting. From the lady with yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, that's that's, that's how a, I felt. That's really, really. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> for me, it was so it was so many levels of abstraction that it didn't even occur to me. Oh. But that's really. I could see that though, for sure. Right. I, I was like, ah, I can't. Remember. I also played um, Batman, Telltale Batman, the first I mean, episode. You and I have a long history as far as the Telltale series yeah, you, goes. Yeah. You and I are obsessed with Telltale. We are. I think some of them are better than others. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, like, your I, I, favorite one is my least favorite one. Right, which is crazy. And we both agree on, uh, on, on uh, Wolf Among Us. Yeah, so, I love Wolf Among Us. So, as a Telltale fan and as a Batman fan, how did this one stack up? Well, I think that... I sometimes start to wonder, you know how they say the choices you make result in a different ending? And I sometimes wonder how yeah, kind of different. <laughs> I think the only thing that end changed for me was whatever at the end of the game, whatever the news castle says, relates to my choices. I don't think it affects your gameplay moving forward in any way or much at all. It's a bummer. You want to you want to feel that. I don't think they do, but you want to feel that, yeah. right? Like, and I don't remember who came up with this, but they. They call that telltale uh, storytelling the diamond method, right? So everybody starts at the same point, it branches out a little bit, and then we all eventually come back yeah, to that same that's, point. that's exactly what it is. And so, like, you, you have the illusion that you're going to get to, it's your ending, because in reality you got to the way you wanted to get there. How was the writing in the game? Because I feel like telltale is so hit and miss with that. Some of them are really great writing, and then some of them are just not okay. Like oh. season two of Walking Dead, I thought it was like, Way weaker than season one. Season one was unbelievable. Season two just dipped quite a bit. I heard Game of Thrones is also pretty bad. How is this compared? I, I liked it. I, I, I didn't think the writing was magnificent anyway. I think Walking Dead or The Wolf Among Us is way better. Yep. Um, but I think, first of all, just having Batman is already yeah, a winner enough. in itself. Because yeah. everyone loves Batman. Everyone knows the story. So they didn't really need to hash out like a backstory. Like, this is Batman. If you're watching this and you don't like Batman, like just unsubscribe. <laughs> this, is, this is Catwoman. Yeah. You know? And I, I, they added some new game mechanics into this game that Telltale hasn't had yet. Um, yep. I don't know if I should give it away, but there's like, you get to choose how you want Batman to battle I love it. Uh, so there's just certain things and twists and the story's good. I, I definitely recommend it. It's okay. very Batman esque and Telltale has at the same time. So, I'm, so do you recommend people start now or wait till more come out? Because, no, start now. Why, okay. why wait? I really like... So I've played them in different in, in different intervals. Like Some of them I've waited. I've played them as they come out. I kind of really enjoy doing an episode a night for like five nights. Okay. I like really like... And you remember more. Like I mean, that's part of like what was so magic for me about uh, Tales from the Borderland was like it was all so fresh. And I, I would never play two. They're like they're all like two hour increments. I can play it for at the end of a night. And then you know, or, or or every other night or whatever, but I can play them in close succession. And 
For me, it's hard when it's a month, a month and a half, two months, because that's the one thing that they do. And they're very ambitious, I get it, but they are, they miss those dates kind of on the regular, and if it slides, I'm going to be really bummed out. So, but you think people should jump in now? I think we should jump in now. Okay. Uh, well, I don't have the patience, you know? Yeah. I, I tend to, when it, when it comes to TV shows, I can wait till everything's all released at once. Like, sure. That's the method, but when it comes to games, I can't really wait. It's not Fair a enough. two hour game. Yeah, that's a good point. Kind of get through it, right? So, I will. All right, okay. You're not going to listen to me. Me? I know, I mean, it's more for them, but like, yeah, I, I may, I may pick it up. Depends on what, there's a busy release uh, schedule coming up, so we'll see. I know. Okay, what games are you looking forward to? Oh man, so many. I think this year is going to be pretty I, bad. I love your taste in games. Like, every time you recommend a game, I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll give it a shot. This year has just been awesome. Yeah, um, well, so, every like, year's been awesome, right? Not every, I mean, like, there's stronger years than others, but like this year we had a weird, like, like real departure. So like, um, I don't know if there's some indie games that I've played coming up to this, I know that wasn't the question, but like, this year we've had like, um, we've had Oxenfree, and we had Firewatch, and we had, oh, Firewatch. Uh, we had uh, Abzu, and then like, um... What do you mean Firewatch? We, we never discussed Firewatch together. I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it because I want to encourage people to play it. Okay. Yeah, just um, play it. I think, I'm um, glad Firewatch exists. I had some qualms with the writing, but some people don't. Some people really liked... Not much writing. I think for, for It's hard to talk about a narrative game, like a game that's only narrative, without... He's like literally, you, you mentioned some... Spoiler type stuff in other games we're talking about, but people should still totally play them. Yeah, sorry guys. If you no no, but this this game, if you know the story, then there's zero reason. That's to play. true. And so I have a hard time talking about it. But I, what I what I am excited about like is that people are taking risks. Uh, and so like it's a cool time, it's a very cool time. This this whole year has been like really. I think it's some really cool stuff. I think on the dates, uh, Campo Santos, that was our first game, and I like, yeah, it totally. was really well done. I yeah. see the graphics not bad, but uh, did you get invested in the character? Did totally. You, whatever he's feeling, you're like, oh, you're like shit. Yeah, totally. So I recommend that game. I mean, it's not a long game. It's like maybe six, eight hours. Yeah. Yep. And it's in the art. The art is Ali Moss. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Uh -huh. but like, um, a lot of nerds out there probably know a lot of his work. He's phenomenal. So yeah, really, really good. We're looking for all kind of, like we're coming to kind of magical season that fourth quarter is like when all the like the big triple A stuff. Um, I've, I really enjoy Titanfall. People who listen to my dumb podcast heard me rave about Titanfall. <laughs> this one's got a single player mode. The story looks uh, really neat. I love that they're doing um, so Battlefield One. I know you like Overwatch. Uh, I am really enjoying yes. Overwatch. Uh, I am weirdly, weirdly into it. I did not think at all. It was one of those things that like I knew it was coming. Um, and it wasn't on my, uh, it wasn't anything on my radar. They're like, hey, that's going to be a thing that I want to play. And then it kind of took over the world. And everybody kept saying, hey, you should try this. Hey, you should try this. And then it did. And it's just like, yeah, that's an incredible, it's an incredible video. I'm, I'm looking for my next Wowza game. I know. What are you looking to play? Like a story based game? You don't play too many multiplayer stuff. Right? I do like, not so, like multiplayer yeah. games because I I don't have the confidence to go up against people who are just so. Hardcore, no, sure, take right? their shit so they don't have a job, they're playing all day, yes. sitting in their mom's basement, fucking yeah. Bong Ripper 420 XLX. So, Self judgmental. Yeah. Like, I just want to play and enjoy the game. Like, so, I, I, I don't have time to play as much as I like. Yeah. So don't judge me on that. So that's why MMO. Like, the way they treat people sometimes is just really off from me. Totally. I hate to say it, but that's So, Overwatch, so that is, this is the anti that. So, it is a competitive game. But they don't ever show your team. They don't even show you really who your deaths are, so you don't judge your kill to death ratio. Um, at the end of every game, they reward you for the things you did right. So you get rewarded no matter what. Like, hey, you did this right, and it tells you. And then at the end of the game, it shows uh, it shows five like standout performances from both teams, and you get a like everybody's performance, and the person with the most likes gets extra experience. It's all positive reinforcement. Though. There's no, and it's just like a welcoming community. There's definitely none of this, like, oh, like you're, you're bringing the team down, or like, whatever. No, it's great. It's great. So, what I'm looking forward to, Skyrim Remastered, because I love Skyrim. I know yep. you've had your little riches. I had a rough run of it, but I'm, I'm going to go down now. Like, yeah, I will play the shit out of the remaster. Well, I like, I like uh, the Skyrim lore, the fantasy. So, I'm so glad you like that. I do. Um, I like the fantasy lore way better than... 
Yep. I don't mean to compare the two, but they're from the same people and the same mechanics. Right. But I'm this fall, right? Is this yeah. fall, September? I'm looking for. Is it really? Yeah. Oh my god, that's so soon. So soon. That's so soon. They basically, I have no they, idea. They basically had it on the shelf and just waited to release it. It's pretty much what they're doing. So yeah. I had no idea. Um, I would have been. Right I would have been much happier if they came out on Elder Scrolls Six, but they decided yeah, not to do that. No. No. <laughs> um, but I'm also looking forward to finally getting to play. Well, you have an Xbox, but I'm on a PS4. But I'm looking forward to playing the two-minute game. Oh, man. <laughs> I have to wait a year. Yes. Oh, you're going to love it. It's so worth the wait. It is so good. I've seen your cosplays as a lot of graph. I'm so jealous. You haven't cool. seen, if you haven't seen it, she kills it. It's one of, one of my favorite things, too. Um, and see, yeah, it's... I'm a big Uncharted guy. I think Naughty Dog's the best in the business. But moment to moment gameplay as Lara Croft is orders of magnitude better than playing this game. Yeah, it's so much more fun. The gunplay is great. Uh, the world is miraculous. Like, just uh, stunning. And then, like, also has those really cool like, set pieces that Drake does. And this is, it's it's stunning. It's a beautiful game. And, like, it's, yeah, it's fucking fantastic. Do you have PS4 then? I do. I have both. Yes, both. Okay, so you played Uncharted 4. Yeah. yeah. And? It's a masterpiece. Yeah, Uncharted, good. like, Naughty Dog is the best in the business and create, and not only gaming, so I know this is a bold, and people give me shit about being hyperbolic, I think they have the best, one of the best storytellers oh, yeah. in the world, like, any medium. I think they're incredible, and I think, um, I yeah, know the that, game was great. I know oftentimes uh, movies that evolve from video games suck, but I feel like it would be really hard considering how much talented movie makers there are to fuck up a Naughty Dog game, because they are working on... Uncharted movie. We are working on a lot of stuff. Rumor has it. I mean, it depends on how much like uh, Bruce Straley and um, who's the other lead in Naughty Dog. God, that's the worst. Uh, well, you know Neil Druckmann. Okay. If yeah, Druckmann and Straley, it depends on how much they're involved with the movie because at core that is about writing and about the relationships. And to your point, I think they could actually do those worlds justice. But to just to take a zombie IP and make another fucking zombie yeah. show. Yeah. That's gonna be weird. The last of us. Yeah, so it doesn't work unless they're involved in creating those connections, and that's what's so magic about that world. Well, they already hired a writer for uh, the last of uh, yes. Uncharted, excuse me. Yeah, and they've been, like a million people and directors have been attached to that. I'm not holding my breath for that. Well, I don't mean to go backwards, but we are in the gaming world, and I just mentioned movies. What do you think of Warcraft? Did you see Warcraft? I did not see Warcraft. Did <laughs> I have seen Warcraft? I, I enjoyed it. You did? I did. I'm in the minority here, again, anti-conformist Kaori. Um, but I thought for what it was, it wasn't bad. Yep. I think the only thing is they couldn't, you're going to think I'm crazy, made it a trilogy because there's orcs and then there's humans and then they mash them up together yep. all into three hours. Right? They could have easily had a better development of who the orcs are, sure. what their incentives are, what's the motivation. Yep. Same with humans in another movie. And then just kind of put that together. Yep. It could have been a trilogy, or it could have been just two movies. But I think they crunched up so much yeah. that a lot of lines got cheesy. A lot of things didn't flow as well. That's tough. But how was Ben Foster? I, I love, love Ben Foster. I do too. He's one of my favorite actors. I, I think he has incredible. I, have you ever, when you were a kid, did you watch Flash Four? Because that's how I. No. Kid. Oh my god. So, yeah, watch Flash Forward. All right. It's like a Disney Channel show. Oh, no, no, no. Basically, Ben Foster plays um, a kid and his best friend, a, na a neighbor who's um, Jewel, Jewel State, who was in Firefly. Okay. So they're like best friends, and they end up like, I don't know. It's so cute. All right. It's kind of like a full house, but mature. It's weird. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> Underwears. But anyway, yeah, so Warcraft, I actually did enjoy that movie, surprisingly. Okay. It got bad ratings. Uh, yeah, it looked expensive. It looked, I mean, just like a version of it looked expensive. Well, Ch China loved it. Okay, fair. I saw it. I saw it now. China's like what made it get to uh, Warcraft to uh, a sequel. Okay. Yeah, I don't think Good. they're, they're going to give, uh, what's his face? Um, David, Bo David Bowie's son. What's his name? Directed David. Moon. Uh, he directed uh, Warcraft. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of his name. But oh, I know right. the other movies he directed. Well, him, they're not coming back. Jones. Duncan Jones. Duncan Jones. Duncan Jones. Not even close. So you said Jones, and then... Yeah, we got there. Yeah. We got Together, there. we made it. So, yeah, and then also another game I'm looking forward to is South Park. Brought oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I really want to play that game. It looks great. I missed the last one. It's just inexcusable. <laughs> how, but, uh, wait, how did you miss the last one? I know, one? and it wasn't just you that told me. 
Uh, Maddie from my show was also like, I know. I think I might try and play that before. We're, we're coming into that season two where. No, you have to play. I mean, how do, you, how do you miss it? You're a ginger. That's all I'm going to say. I know. <laughs> oh, and I own it. It's like. Oh, um, I know, I know. And I don't know what, like, so I do appreciate South Park. I did love Book, like, Book of Mormon. I was amazing. So this guy, Trey and Matt, are incredible. I just missed it. It was one of those things where like, something it. else came out. Do I have it? You have it, though. I, you just said you have it. You no, don't? I don't own it. But I mean, I'm sure I can get it. Well, I have it on the PS3. Okay. But I don't I'll know if you want to. I don't know if you want to log in your PS, like load that whole thing in. Yeah. I'm, I'm fine with the new consoles. I'll figure it out. It's backward compatible on Xbox right now, so maybe I can figure that out. You something. should play yeah. it. Okay. And you're, that's one of your most anticipated this year? Fractured, but the whole, yeah. When does it come out? Because I was so surprised with the first one. Yep. Because you didn't expect, like, you look at South Park, you're like, it's going to be slapstick fun at best. Yep. But it really, it's not only fun, but, like, mechanics are just like Child of Life, obviously Ubisoft, right? Right. And um, the storyline's great. So there's humor, storyline. Lots of gingers. You got Lots of gingers. I, I don't want to give it away. There's the whole Canada section I heard is great. I need to see. I know. I know. I need to. Oh, the Canada section is amazing. I've heard. I need to go. Yeah. So you, you got to be sold because I need to talk about this. Before. Okay. South Park, uh, Serial Podcast, and Penny Breast. I'm getting homework. That's what this is. I just gave you like a month. But I feel like if they're watching this, they should be having the same homework. Like you guys should be joining in on this and all come back and discuss. They probably already watched it and they're probably. like commenting below or not commenting below. But you guys should comment below. And is there anything else you want to talk about? I mean, I can't think of. Uh, so playing Grim and Sky. Um, oh yes. I'll leave. I, I, I won't spend too much time with that. I'm having a hard time kind of recommending it. So like, for those who don't know, um, if you're watching, you should probably have a really good idea. But it's um. It's been like, it's this indie game developed by like nine people that has been on the front, like been on E3, like Sony's got behind it in yeah, a big way. Yeah. And I think the hype got away from them. And I hate that word hype because I think people throw it around for a lot of stuff. But I genuinely think expectations were, they're all out of whack for this game. I think people just thought it was going to be the game they were playing for forever. And like, ostensibly you could, right? Because it's procedurally generated and there's nine quadrillion planets. It's a number that doesn't even make any sense. Right. You very literally will never be able to see the end of it. Um, so it's this massive game that, like, the core gameplay loop is very shallow. Oh, no. It's you wander around, you gather elements, and you get in your ship, lather, rinse, repeat. And it really is just an inventory management game. And it's magic to go to this whole planet that nobody's ever been to. You can name it. So yeah. if anybody ever runs into it, you can name every species you find. And every... So, for example, um, I'm a bit of a Doctor Who nerd. I was the first person in the world who named a planet Gallifrey, which is where uh, the doctor's from. Okay. I was very excited about that. Uh, but like at the end of the day, like I'm not sure I'm going to stick with it. Um, I think it's fascinating, and the sense of scale is something that's... How about the, first the gameplay? Time, they haven't said, but some guy, I mean, like literally, uh, one guy said he beat it in about 30 hours, but I think that's kind of mainlining, and by beat it, it means you get to the center of the galaxy. Okay. Um, Spoiler alert. I don't, I don't entirely know what that even entails. Um, but it's neat, so I'll say this and we can kind of wrap. Um, no, 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 it's time. magic, the idea of being in a ship, flying up, leaving the atmosphere, leaving a planet behind, no loading, and then flying to another planet and then landing on that planet. It's a scale of, like we've never seen. And so what they've pulled off is a technical marvel. It doesn't mean it's a good game. And so I'm kind of, I'm hoping there's more to it as I get further into it. I'm about three hours in right now and it's a lot of the same. So. Just, you know, I'm, I'm if I don't get a text message from you saying you gotta play that game, yeah, no, fair enough. I would hold off on it because I tell you, I, I'll, I, I'll let you know either way. I'll just give just send you one of those. I'll let you know two of those. I usually like the moment you tell me that there's a game that's good. I, I will. I'm gonna very, but very much <laughs> focus on making sure that my recommendations yeah. are good going forward. I, I have no idea they carried that much weight. Because oh, well, I think the first game you recommended to me was. Uh, brothers, and I was blown away by brothers. Oh, it's so good. I love that you took a chance on that game. Yeah, it was so amazing. Many wrote that game off. It was Why? It was brother, so. A Tale of Two Sons. If you haven't played that, it's underrated. But you did. You did give me a sale. That Gone Home game or whatever. You didn't like Gone Home? No, I did I not. Stand by Gone Home. I skipped. That and there was another game you gave me that I was like, no. You're like, what are you like? What are you doing? And she won a lot. Uh, the one with um. There's all these like tapes and then. Uh, and then she. Like, Gone that? Home was so good. Like, critics agree with me. Like, Gone Home's got like a 95 Metacritic. Like, it's not just me that like... I know, I'm terrible. No, I'm no. Terrible. I, 
it's just one of the stories that stuck with me for a very long time. I think it's I not much of a game. I think it's still on my desktop. But really? anyway, yeah. Anyway, but yeah, gone home. Fair enough. Okay. And uh, there was another game you recommended where she's like getting interviewed and there's all these tapes and have, her like, story. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, nah. it was weird. <laughs> I agree. Again, I'm like, I, I like playing games where these people take risks. So yeah. I think it's like so many, so many games have to be hits that they become very formulaic. Yeah. And that game, that first story was only anything you've ever played. No, it's very original. For I, sure. It's not much of a game. I gotta watch what I recommend. I'm, no. I might just say, hey, look, this is a different game. I'll use different. Look, you're pretty perfect, but you're not perfect. Oh, Fair enough. Enough. <laughs> I'll take it. Okay. Thank you. So you're playing No Man's Sky. I'm playing uh, Sailor Moon Drops and uh, 999. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you played that? No, but I've heard a lot about 999. Yeah. It's, I'm at a point where I fell asleep because it's a lot of talking. Yep. Especially in the beginning. I'm like, oh, man. So Dave Klein, I'm going to borrow his. Yeah, I mean the game, and I. Oh, cool. And I uh, texted him today saying, "Dude, there's so much talk. I fell asleep." What did he say? Because <laughs> like, he loves the game. Yeah, I know. So he's like, "Dude, just get, get through the talk. There's gonna be a lot less talk." I'm like, okay. Yeah. Hopefully it improves because too much talk. It's gonna be kind of like a novel slash game, yep. and it's just too novel at this okay. point. But I'm only like an hour. One. Okay. Anyway, so that's it, and yeah, thanks for stopping by. And, and having some delicious, I, I feel like I housed yeah. most of this while you actually did the talking. Um, so thank you for inviting me to take care. Of course, and I have honey in my in my hair now. It looks great, you're killing it. I've never <laughs> seen anybody wear honey like you. I Thank you. Totally. Thank you. Um, oh, we, well, I'm in the process of working on improving the audio, a place to shoot, and all yeah. that stuff, so bear with us. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Hopefully you can come back. Come back anytime. No, oh, I definitely will. Don't think I won't. Bribe me with ice cream and like talking about great stuff. I'm I, on board. I feel special that you're like, okay, I'll get on your YouTube channel. Yeah, I know. It's a big deal. So I was very excited watch. about it. <laughs> like, subscribe, all that nonsense. Yes, like, subscribe, thumbs up, tell a friend, and all that good stuff. And where can people follow you, Patrick, if they decide to get this far to the video? I certainly wouldn't if you've watched this and you know I'm an idiot. Uh, I'm Peter the D's on Twitter. Uh, I also host a video game podcast on iTunes uh, where we talk about all this nonsense. It's called Pixel by Pixel. She's done it three or four times. She's our favorite guest. That's a, that's a fun. That's where I learned about Burning Man. Oh, right on. <laughs> yeah, Evan's very, very into Burning Man. Is he going to see it? Yeah, Isn't it just like in two weeks or something? I don't know. That's, that, sounds amazing. It's very yeah. good, by the way. And yeah, you can follow me, K A O R I O U S. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, yeah, so Thanks. thank you guys. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Mm -hmm.